able to talk to you about a brand new game called Creatures Inc. The game got released on Steam the 22nd of March 2019 by developer and publisher Little Beavers Games. Creatures Inc. finds itself in an early access alpha stage in which the developers are asking the community to help them out shaping their game. The earlier you play, the faster developers can act upon the player's feedback, suggestions and bug reports. I want to talk about this game because it intrigued me from the very first day I got acquainted with it and I want to bring it to everybody's attention. Now let me tell you something more about the gameplay itself. Creatures Inc is actually a massive multiplayer online game or MMO. One of the extra reasons why I made this video is to improve the massive in massive multiplayer. At the moment, not that many players know about the existence of this game, and those who do, have to change that. There is no PvP, and there are no servers, so how does this game work? How can people play together? Well, the way to co-op is through peer-to-peer. -peer. If you want to know more about peer-to-peer, -peer, then I advise you to take a look at the website of which I'll put a link in the description of this video. When you start the game, you can choose between hosting a game or joining one. If you choose to join a game, you will get a list of hosted games by friends who are in your Steam friend list. In an earlier stage of the game, it was possible to have random people in your hosted game, but some players didn't take the co-op part of the game series and started to destroy other people's structures and sabotaged all their storage boxes which contained a lot of weapons, equipment and resources. A possible solution the developers came up with was making it only possible for Steam friends to join your game. But if you do not want to join a game, you can host one yourself. If you do so, you have the possibility to open it up for your Steam friends or you can choose to keep it private by selecting the private solo option. The choice is entirely yours. Whatever option you pick, you will always start in the safe zone of the valley. Yes indeed, players have to battle to survive in a dangerous valley filled with terrifying creatures which can also be tamed but more about that in a later stage of this video. The store is where your adventure begins when you start the game for the first time. In that shop you are able to buy food and water, medical kits, tools and weapons. In a later stage of the game you will be able to buy more weapons than the ones already presented and also weapon skins. But like I said, only in a later stage of development. Now those things are declared as out of stock. When you walk around in that safe zone you will find axes and barbed wire beds which you can pick up for later use. In this part of the valley you don't have to be afraid of getting attacked by creatures, they don't come this far. Inside these walls and in a pretty big perimeter around it you are safe. Not only the store can be found in the safe zone but also the contracts office. Contract is something new we got with the latest update. A contract is like a mission. You have to meet certain requirements and when you do, you will get paid. Once you leave the safe borders of the safe zone, you have to be very careful for those frightful creatures who will hunt you down. Once you're close enough, they smell it and are eager to attack. Keep your eyes open at all times. Of course, the radar or minimap in the lower right corner is a very helpful instrument. When creatures are nearby, they will pop up as red dots on that radar. When you're walking through the valley of death, um, no, that's another movie. When you're walking through the valley, you will discover several different types of buildings. You'll stumble upon normal houses, farms, factories, military territory and much more. Of course, those buildings are all deserted. That's only normal if you know that the world you're wandering in got took over by those creatures people living in these quarters got killed or they fled the scene as fast as possible. Only here and there you will find some survivors which you have to rescue by leading them to the safe zone. For every brought back survivor 
you earn $100. Those deserted houses are excellent places to gather resources. But be careful of the creatures guarding those buildings. You will have to put up a good fight to slay them or even to tame one. You can kill creatures by hitting them with an axe or bat, but the most effective way is of course the use of a firearm. You can buy those at a store and you can even craft a shotgun on your workbench. Killing creatures will earn you money. And we all love the sound of that, don't we? There are even locations where you can find abandoned vehicles, which you can use yourself. Up until now, I found three different automobiles. A normal citizen car, a security car and a police car. Models are all the same and I leave it up to you guys to determine which brand the developers took as example for these four wheel drives. Just be wary when you use that Jeep as a weapon. It has a health bar and when that runs low on HP, your car will crash and burn. But running around killing creatures is not the only thing you need to attend to. You also have to build yourself a safe place to stay or multiple places. The sky is the limit. In order to build, you need woodlots. Those you obtain by chopping down trees. Keep an eye on the weight restrictions of your backpack, which is 50 kilos. Once you have enough wood collected, you can start building. You can start with a small square shack, but using your imagination will provide you with promising structures. Once your safe haven is built, you can fill it up with a workbench, which will let you build some other furniture like a bed, table and chairs, but also a campfire and furnace. The bed can be set as spawn point in the game. After you died, you'll be brought back to the spawn point. The campfire is needed to cook raw meat and the furnace is used to melt stone to iron bars. I'm sure that in the future we will get more stuff to craft with these things. Whatever you do in this game, you always have to pay attention to your health, which is indicated in the lower left corner of the screen. You need to eat and drink at regular basis and you have to heal yourself with bandages or a healing kit when needed. Never lose track of these parameters, otherwise you will end up dead. When you die, you will respawn at your set respawn point. Otherwise, if you didn't do that, you'll come to life at the store in the safe zone. At the moment, a yellow star will appear on your mini-map at the location where you died. On that site, you will find a large container which is filled with all the stuff you carried around before you died. You can pick that all up, but be mindful of the fact that the container will only be there for a brief moment of time before it disappears and you lose all the gathered equipment and resources. You do not have to face the dreadful creatures all by yourself. You can get help of a tamed creature. Yes, you heard it right. You can tame creatures. The only two things you need for that is a loaded taser and a cage. At the moment there are two specific creatures you can tame. And that is a Petraeusaur or rule from. The other known creatures, the giant Aragnox and Adamances, cannot be tamed. There are already other creatures told out by the developers, but those will be implemented in a later stage of development. You can tame a creature by shooting at it with a taser and then you have to press the E button to put it into a cage. It takes about 10 seconds to tame that cult Petraeusaur or a Wolfram. After being tamed you can call them and from that moment they run by your side, fighting with you. Just keep in mind that also those tamed creatures have an HP bar. Recall them in time so they do not die. Does your creature die? You can tame another one. If you have a tamed creature but you would like to have another species, you can simply sacrifice it and find yourself another one. Yes, you can only keep one tamed creature at a time. Maybe this will change in the future. I've suggested that option, but I don't know yet if the developers have the same thing in mind. As how I see it, 
this game has a lot of potential, but there's still a lot of work to do. I already have more than 25 hours on the clock and I'm trying to be enormously involved in the development. I'm active on their official Discord server and try to give as much feedback as I possibly can. I'll put the link of their Discord in the description down below. I do have the feeling that the developers are really involved as well. They listen to the community, to what they have to say, and try to act accordingly as much as possible. I can only stress that this is a very important detail that will have to stay as it is in order for the game to grow in a good way. But for now, I have full confidence in that. I can really recommend this game to people who like to play in an open world and are not afraid to take part in an early access development. But even if you do not want to take actively part in the development, you will have quite some fun playing this game. You can find the game on Steam for 8.19 euros. I'll put the link in the description of the video. I hope you enjoyed my review for this game. Please give me the thumbs up and if you didn't subscribe yet, please do so. More videos like this will follow. Also share the video with friends to help us spread the word.